everyone welcome to cancer healing journey talks myself sonali modi from community outreach team of zenonco.io and love heals cancer cancer healing journey talks help cancer survivors and caregivers to share their journey with vast number of other caregivers and survivors it also motivates and inspires them to for the faster recovery so firstly i would like to introduce you to today, today's speaker miss mary so she is a cancer survivor and i am really happy that you are here with us today ma'am so please start with your introduction well thank you for having me um i am uh 57 years old i live in new jersey in the united states i was diagnosed actually i have been diagnosed with two cancers i was treated for breast cancer in 2007 and i was diagnosed with stage 4 colorectal cancer in 2013 so mm. i've been um cancer free four times with the colorectal cancer um coming up on 3 years in november that i've been uh, no evidence of disease so i want to keep that going <laughs> so at what stage your cancer got diagnosed i was stage 4 so i had metastases to my liver and my lung at okay. time of diagnosis so what were the symptoms and how it got diagnosed um i was being followed by an oncologist from the breast cancer so i was having blood work done regularly and uh one of the last appointments i had with him my uh iron was extremely low so i was extremely anemic Okay. Um so we did uh we tried to do some things to bring that back up and that led to having a colonos- colonoscopy which found the tumor in my sigmoid colon. So what was the first reaction when you got to know that you're diagnosed with cancer and how your family took this news? Well, after going through the breast cancer treatment, I was shocked i thought oh my gosh we have to do this again um mm-hmm. i was very scared i was very upset and emotional um thinking how how can this happen and i have three children at the time they were i think 12 15 and and 18 so i thought about them immediately um very scared mm-hmm. So what treatment you underwent through? I had hmm so over the past 8 years I've had seven surgeries. Okay. I did 24 cycles of chemotherapy. Okay. I had radio frequency ablation and hmm. radiation. Okay. So did you find any alternative treatment? I I did things on my own. um mm-hmm. most doctors and oncologists are pretty traditional with their treatments so i tried to find things on my own to complement i i did i used essential oils i changed my diet um meditation prayer exercise yoga i i tried it all <laughs> yeah so how did you manage your emotional well-being Um that was difficult at times I had some really low low days um just keeping telling myself to to take one day at a time and and try mm-hmm. to stay in the moment you know sometimes one hour at a time uh listening to meditation tapes helped a lot especially at night uh when mm-hmm. I would have anxiety and and couldn't sleep so I would listen to the tapes um taking a walk Mm-hmm. um online support groups were amazing i think i don't know if i would have gotten through everything as well without having support from other patients and caregivers that were going through the same thing so that was a big one for me yes so who was your support system during those times my husband was the main support person and and he has been absolutely wonderful he's i call him my rock because he was very steady um throughout everything um my children were wonderful uh friends and family i have uh family in the medical 
mm-hmm. industry. So my brother-in-law is a, a surgeon and he was very instrumental in finding my providers and surgeons and, and being part of my, my treatment options, treatment plans. Oh. So how was your experience with the doctors and other medical staff? Um, well, I did end up going, I had all my surgeries where my brother-in-law was uh, chief of cardiothoracic. So I had an excellent, I had a very good experience with all of that because I kind of had a VIP treatment, Mm -hmm. Um, but I did go to other hospitals and and offices and doctors for second opinions. And Mm -hmm. for the most part, I think everyone was, was great. Um, We were very positive from the beginning. We always talked about curative intent. So we we wanted to cure, cure this. And um, some, some of the challenges were, were getting appointments in a timely manner. You know, it's hard to get appointments with some doctors, Um, Mm. getting all of your medical records and scan discs, um, over to wherever you want to go. So sometimes that would hold things up. It w- wasn't very smooth. There's, there's not one central place where all of your information is and, and any doctor can retrieve it. So that was a little bit of a challenge. Yes. So what were the things that helped you and uh, kept you going during those times on your journey? My children were number one, um, they were on the younger side. My, my oldest actually had just started college, so she wasn't so young, but the two that were home, I wanted to keep things as normal as possible. So that forced me to get up and you know have a smile on my face and, and try to do as much as I could do for them so that their routine wasn't disrupted. Um, so that, that was the main thing. And then, like I said, the, the support from peers on the uh, online support groups was great because I, I could talk to them 24 yes. seven um, and they understood because they were going through the same thing. So how you felt when you first heard that you are cancer free? Well, it's funny because you think you would jump up and down and, and scream and yell and be happy, but it's um, sometimes you, you still have in the back of your head that mm. it can it come back. So that there's mm. always that worry and a little black cloud that kind of follows you around. But I was very, um, I was very happy. I mean, that was our goal and that was, you know, that, that made me feel relief. I could, I could breathe for a little bit and then take whatever comes, you know, when it, when it comes. Yes. So do you have the fear of this recurrence? Uh, and if yes, then like how you deal with it? Um, yes, I do. And at first, because I've been, I've had three recurrences. So, so I'm, um, no evidence of disease for the fourth time now. So I've, I've been through it several times. Um, mm-hmm. At first, I didn't really think about it because you just, you're like, okay, it's gone. And you just want to continue with your life. Um, but then I had to do follow-up chemo treatment. So I was still on, on treatment. Um, and then when the first one came back, it, it's, it's like somebody punched you in the stomach. You're like, oh yeah. no, you know, just that doom. You just have that sense of doom and, and boy, we have to do this again. And, but my, my doctors were always so positive and that really helped me. They were mm-hmm. always positive, especially my liver surgeon. He would just say, we'll just go in and take it out. Like, like no problem. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that yeah. helped. So, you know, there are times when you feel that it's too much to handle but you still don't give up. So what was the thing that motivated you and kept you going on such days? Again, I think sometimes just being with myself and reflecting on on things and digging deep down to say, Mm -hmm. okay, like we got to keep doing this. Um, I was prescribed 
a medication for anxiety. There were mm-hmm. times where it was too much for me. Uh, sleeping was interrupted and sometimes during the day or going to appointments. So the medication helped me get through some, some of the most difficult days. Um, again, the meditation tapes were great. Um, prayer, just some getting outside and taking a walk. And again, um, the online support groups with, with, you know, my, my cancer friends to talk to and, you know, just vent just to let it all out and, and knowing that they understand because they're in the same position. So that really helped. So did you make any lifestyle changes during or after the treatment? Um, I did. I did continue to work. And then after a certain point, I decided to not go back to work. So that was major. I had always worked a full-time job, even with all three children. Um, So I left a job that I had been at for 11 years. So that was one major factor. Um, I did change my diet. Mm -hmm. I tried to, to go more on the, the, uh, vegetarian side, more fruits and vegetables, um, mm. lower sugar, lo- lower dairy, um, no alcohol, no caffeine, things like that. Um, mm. And exercise a little, you know, try to, to get on a more regular exercise plan. Yeah. So trying to keep my stress levels down and the anxiety. So do you think that cancer has changed you in a positive way? Hmm. I know it has changed me for sure. And I'm not sure if positive or negative. Um, I've always appreciated things. You know, some people say, oh, well, once you have cancer, you learn to appreciate the little things and, you know, you stop and smell the roses. Um, I do that more for sure. And I, I, I really... Um, think about what's most important to me when, when deciding to do things. Um, my, my husband and my children have, have always been a priority, but they are, are more a priority now. If, if any, everything else went away in the world, if I had them and had time with them, that is all that matters. So um, I just have a, 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 a lighter feeling I guess I don't, I try not to worry about too many things. Yes. The big things we, we save it for the big, big worries. <laughs> yeah. So what, what life lessons you got from your journey? Don't sweat the small stuff. Um, life lessons. Yeah. Um, friends and family are important. Um, it, learn to, to really take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get so busy in life with things, we, we tend to not notice things as much, or we put them off, um, like doctor, regular doctor's appointments. If, if there is something that's bothering you, um, go and get it checked out. Don't wait. Um, you know, follow the guidelines for screenings, uh, stuff like that. So have you ever asked yourself this question, why me? And if yes, then how you cope up with the, this thought? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So have you ever asked yourself that why me? Why me only? Why I am suffering from this disease? And if yes, then how you cope up with this thought? Yes, I have. Um, I, I don't know if there's anyone out there who, who doesn't ask why me. Um, and I guess I don't, I reading, you know, Bible scripture and, and, and praying and, and just reflecting on that. Um, you know, why not me? Um, that's a hard one. That's a hard one to, to deal with and, and Mm -hmm. to figure out because there are no straight answers. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So what would be your message to other cancer patients and caregivers? Never give up. 
just mm -hmm. advocate for yourself and uh, you know get answers, uh, educate yourself, find out everything you can about your disease, ask questions when you go to the doctor. Um, no, feel feel good and confident with your team that you're getting the best care and the best treatment options presented to you. So yeah, always have hope and, and never give up. Yeah, so how did you overcome your fear of treatment or of side effects? Oh, I think in the beginning when you're in shock, you just do whatever they tell you to do and it's, you, mm -hmm. you don't know what how you're gonna react. So um, I just took every side effect as it came and, and, and did whatever I could to, to relieve that. Um, fortunately, I was, I was lucky not to have severe side effects. So my, my uh, side effects were very manageable. I call them manageable because I was mm -hmm. able to, to do things to manage them. Um, so, yeah. So when did you think that you can beat this disease or was this belief always there with you? I think after I had my first surgery, I, I felt confidence in, in my surgeons and I felt the positivity from my doctors. And yeah, very early on, I thought, yeah, we're, we're gonna do this. Okay. So did you join any support group? And if so, then how it helped you? Um, I didn't join a support group locally in person. I never went to any type of meetings or anything like that, but online uh, through Facebook, uh, Colon Town was a okay. big uh, support group uh, for me. And, and I, I now actually, kind of work for the, the foundation that manages Colon Town. So I've been very involved with them. Okay, so what do you think is the importance of the support group for survivors or caregivers? Oh, it's the peer-to-peer -peer communication. It's, it's uh, uh, talking with other people who are experiencing what you're going through so they understand um, it's support, uh, you know, for patients, but for, I think a lot for caregivers as well, because the caregivers have a huge role in the patient's, uh, survival and, uh, they, they don't get as much recognition as they should. And it's, it's a very, it's a very difficult position to be in sometimes for, for some people. It's, it's very hard. Um, yes. Yeah, so at zenonco.io, we help cancer patients from uh, throughout the journey from diagnosis to forever. So what do you think about our work? Oh, I think it's amazing. I think there should be more organizations like that. Um, yeah. And it, it truly is helpful to the patient and the caregiver for sure. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how I would have gotten through with, without that type of support. Yes. I think it would have been a very different journey for sure. Yeah. So what do you think about the stigmas attached to cancer and the importance of awareness for it? I think there's a very negative stigma. Um, you know, when throughout my journey and and when i was diagnosed i i felt shame i felt embarrassed i felt like i did something wrong so that was all my own you know my own self hmm. having those feelings so yeah i i think people should talk about it more there should be more general discussion about all types of cancers there and shouldn't be any taboo no, no, yes. none, mm -hmm. especially with certain cancers, because, you know, with colon cancer, cancer, you know, it, it's, it's embarrassing, you know, people don't want to talk about yes, huh? certain I've seen that bodies. Too. Yeah. So, but, but it, we need to, because the people need to, to be educated and learn and know if they're having symptoms and 
not to be afraid to ask about it or talk about it. Yes. So if you have to sum up your journey in one sentence, then what would that be? Hmm. I've been to hell and back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a rocky road, but I've, I've made it through and, and I could see the light for sure. Yes. So thank you so much for your valuable time. Miss Mari. So I'm sure this session really motivates people out there who are traveling or being traveled through this cancer journey. So it was lovely having you here with us today in this session. So once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.